10 verses that prove eternal security, or once saved, always saved. Now, this list will absolutely, positively prove without a doubt from the Bible that God has saved you forever, and there's nothing you can do to mess that up. Listen, we don't earn salvation, therefore, we can't unearn salvation. We didn't have to do anything to obtain salvation. It's not our responsibility to keep our salvation with good works. Now, we ought to do good works, but that is not how we're saved. Most people that teach that you can lose your salvation or that don't believe in once saved, always saved, they usually preach a works-based salvation, that somehow it's by you bringing your good works, turning your life around, repenting of sin, but the Bible does not teach that. It simply teaches we must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to trust that he's God, he died for our sins, he rose again. Without him, our sins are not forgiven. Number one, Titus 1-2. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Listen, God can't lie. God cannot lie. People that don't believe in eternal security, they're essentially calling God a liar. They don't believe the Bible and they don't believe God. You know, the Bible tells us, he that believeth not God hath made him a liar. You either believe in the hope of eternal life or you believe that God lied and he would take it from you. Number two. John 3.16, very obvious, the most famous verse in the world, and I don't think it's famous by man's will. I believe God has spread this all across the world for his glory. It's so simple, it contains the entire gospel. Look at it, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That means anyone that believes and listen, how long does everlasting last for? Obviously, it lasts forever. When it says not perish, he's saying you will not taste of the second death. He paid for all of your sins, the ones that you haven't asked forgiveness for, the ones you've forgotten about, the ones that you hope no one finds out about, the ones you haven't committed yet. Listen, those that teach you could lose your salvation because of a sin you have not yet committed, they're teaching that the blood of Jesus Christ is not sufficient for salvation. Number three, John 6, 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And listen, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. This is the promise of God. I will not cast you out. He has paid for all of your sins. Number four, John 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. That means you have it right now. At the moment that you believe, it's not something that starts at the death of your body. It's something that begins at the belief and your soul is sealed. Number five, John 10, 28. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Eternal life lasts forever he says, you'll never perish. He's talking about your soul will never die. You won't go to hell and, and you'll never be plucked out of God's hand. You will never be cast away by God for your sin. He paid for your sin. Number six, John 11 verses 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Jesus asked the question, do you believe that? If you believe on Jesus, you will never die. That's the promise. Isn't that awesome? Number seven, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In whom also ye trusted, after that ye had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, that after ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. He says, until the day that your body is redeemed, it's called the resurrection. Because you've trusted in him, you've believed that's the gospel of your salvation, not by your works of righteousness. You are sealed with God's Holy Spirit. That's his promise until the day he resurrects you again and gives you a complete new body. Ephesians 4 says something similar. He says, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Number eight, Hebrews 13, 5. 
Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Again, God making you a promise. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not take away your salvation. Number nine. 1 John 5, verses 4 and 5. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. We're saved by our faith, trusting that Jesus is the Son of God, making him the God that saves us from our sins. And by that we overcome this world. Not by stopping our sin, not by turning our life around, it's only by our faith. Number 10, 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. He wants you to know for sure right now because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Son of God, that you will live forever with him. That's his promise. Now listen, these are 10 great verses that absolutely prove there's nothing you can do to lose your salvation. God's promise was you have faith in him, you trust in his finished work, you've entered into his rest, and you're saved. But listen to me, Christian. If you're saved and you're fooling around with sin, you've got sin in your life that you're allowing, you're grieving the Holy Spirit, I want to tell you God will judge you in the flesh. His promise is that he'll never take away your salvation. But he also promises you, if you're his child, he will correct you. He will crack your body. He will take his blessing off of your life. Listen to me, Christian. If you're living in sin, you better get it right and serve God while there's time. Only you can preach the gospel and get someone else saved. God has called us to set the captives free. Now, what are you doing about it? Thank you for listening. God bless.